Let me tell you about one of those families I've come to know. I first met Corey Remsburg, a proud Army Ranger, at Omaha Beach on the 65th anniversary of D-Day. Along with some of his fellow Rangers, he walked me through the program and the ceremony. He was a strong, impressive young man. He had an easy manner. He was sharp as a tack. And we joked around and took pictures. And I told him to stay in touch. A few months later, on his 10th deployment, Corey was nearly killed by a massive roadside bomb in Afghanistan. His comrades found him in a canal, face down, underwater, shrapnel in his brain. For months, he lay in a coma. The next time I met him in the hospital, he couldn't speak, could barely move. Over the years, He's endured dozens of surgeries and procedures, hours of grueling rehab every day. Even now, Corey's still blind in one eye, still struggles on his left side. But slowly, steadily, with the support of caregivers like his dad, Craig, and the community around him, Corey has grown stronger. Day by day, he's learned to speak again and stand again, and walk again. And he's working toward the day when he can serve his country again. My recovery has not been easy, he says. Nothing in life that's worth anything is easy. Corey is here tonight. And like the army he loves, like the America he serves, Sergeant First Class Corey Ramsberg never gives up and he does not quit. Corey. Whenever anybody asks how I lost my arm, I'm telling the truth when I actually say it, but it's a kind of joking fashion. But I lost my arm during a game of spades. I got caught cheating on the third book, Three of Hearts. And a lot of people are like, they cut your arm off. And it's to me, it's instant karma. Uh, they literally grabbed the cards, and as they were flipping them over, a rocket came through the roof of the building, landed about 10 feet to the left of me. Ended up uh, fracturing ear to ear in 24 different places. Broke my jaw in three. Had a six inch skull fracture in the back of my head. Three broke ribs, two collapsed lungs, my uh, intestines severed, and my left arm got mangled. The Military Adaptive Sports Program is a great program um, that I've seen down at Walter Reed, and it's evolved since then. And uh, it started off with more like almost trips and it was like a sports recreational therapy and from that they actually realized or seen the power of healing within sports and actually developed a whole program specified just for adaptive sports to include kayaking and, and getting into competitive sports helping soldiers find their new normal um, as they're going through their phases of trying to re establish themselves within themselves and the community. Adaptive Sports has a huge uh, life-changing experiences, especially when you fall in love with it. And you might not fall in love with the first Adaptive Sport you try, 
but through adaptive sports, I never used to snowboard, but I started snowboarding through adaptive sports. I started kayaking through adaptive sports. Track and field, I re-got into. And the love I have of competition just is fueled by the adaptive sports programs, and it opens up so many doors to just finding a better, happier me. Even though I'm in a wheelchair and I'm deaf and you know, I'm blind, I can still do the things that I used to be able to do, you know, and I can do them well. And I can do them at a place where I, I can compete and I can win. And you know what, that's, that was a true, true encouragement. The only other thing I would say is that since then, I've been, thanks to my wife, training every day, all day long, in all, because I do four events, so, it's not just, I can't go and just do one event for the day, because you know what, you, well, you let the other three slack. And so that's the biggest thing, you know, I remember last week my wife saying, you know, I came in from, from work and she's like, well, I, I'd already shot air rifle, I shot archery, and I'd swam. And she said, well, have you hand cycled? And I'm like, no. She said, well, we still have some time in the day. It ain't dark yet. Let's go. And I'm like, You've got to be kidding me. Does military adaptive sports program change lives? I would say yes. Because, you know, it gives, again, I'm going back to it just gives hope. It, gives, it can draw people out of a depressed state of I can't do anything, I, I, what, what's the point? To, on the other side, I have goals. I have, I'm a part of a community, a family. Military adaptive sports program is not just one team. It's a family. There's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of, you know, networking. There's a lot of resources available that you don't know about till you get there, till you become a part of that family. She is strong. Let me tell you, she is strong. And not just this, but also in heart. I mean, she, she had to be the one who came to the hospital every day just to see if I was alive. I know I wouldn't be half of where I'm at if uh, she wasn't around. I give her a hard time right now again about what she should be or could be doing, but the reality is that she she sees beforehand what I need, and I'm like, you didn't ask for this. You had no idea a plan, a thought of me being in a wheelchair, needing a help, needing a caregiver. I was the caregiver, but now I'm not. So I would say it's been an inspiration to me to see her not quit. I mean, it, the biggest the biggest thing I have is is what's on my, my bracelet. The strength comes from an indomitable will to never quit. She has that. It's good that you have all this support. It's good that people are providing resources for you. But the bottom line is. The only reason they're providing resources and support for you is because you chose to do something different with your life and with your own recovery, right? So you've got to take the first step. You've got to be the ones to, to choose to take the first step. You've got to be the ones to sustain it, things like that. So I think if you continue to do that, get somebody else involved, we can't go wrong. I had a chance to speak with a young Marine and he said, it's really neat to see that there's other men and women in all the other branches that are going through the same experiences that I'm going through. So I know now that we all have something in common and that's what makes these things very special. These events make them special and they make lifelong friendships and that's what they need as they move through their next phase in life. They need those friendships to help them when times are tough, to help them through other events, to really get them motivated and to get other people motivated to come and join these programs. You don't realize how much your teammates are behind you. We have people out here that are trying it for the first time and they were scared to try things, but 
during the uh, time out here, they realized that their teammates got their back, and they're like, you know what, I'll give it a shot, I'll try it. I mean, several people come to mind, I don't want to drop their names, but they were out here, they did it, and they felt that their team was behind them. They were able to try something new, like get on a running blade, and even though they've only been on it for a week and a half, they're out there running a race. I mean, that's incredible. It doesn't happen too many other places where you'll see guys have that kind of courage. I had a fall actually off of one of the MRAP trucks as I was doing inventory. And when I came back, they said that I had torn part of my meniscus and my ACL in my right knee. I had torn my labrum and my rotator cuff in both shoulders. I had um, lower lumbar spinal stenosis as well as three bulging discs between the L3 to S1 region. Um, I, I wouldn't name them individually, but between those regions. Um, I was having problem with um, with my bladder. I actually have an implant that actually helps to control my bladder now because overseas I was having issues as to where I just couldn't. I was having issues, but I'll say it that way. And I also um, was suffering really bad from anxiety. Uh, I was in an area that was heavily attacked. We were constantly um, hearing things going off. We're constantly having to, to run for cover. They later diagnosed it as uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. I know a lot of bases are now offering um, adaptive sports programs and you never know if it's something that you're willing to do until you try it. The biggest thing I've seen as far as with sitting volleyball is that a lot of people once they get on the court and they start playing, they actually enjoy it. And that enjoyment translates into maybe coming out to the Army Warrior Game Trials. Um, it's different things that I guess people don't understand because they say, oh, this is adaptive sports. I don't want to play basketball from a wheelchair. I don't want to, you know, play volleyball on the floor. But it's a way to get you back active. It's a way to get you back up and just doing some things. A lot of things that I saw when I was at stationed at Fort Belvoir um, Warrior Transition Unit was that a lot of people were just sitting in their rooms. You know, they, they weren't doing anything. They were like myself. They were depressed about their injuries. This gives you something to do. And it's something great to do, something that's going to, again, get you active, get you going. It may even help you mentally. It helped me a lot mentally as far as participating in a lot of sports because I wasn't just sitting around being depressed. So for anyone who's maybe just, you're not doing anything or if you're just want something to do, give it a try. Give it a try. It's, it's not going to hurt anything just to try out adaptive sports. I've always been a motorcycle enthusiast. A lady was, I was stationed in Nashville at the time as a recruiter. A lady came on the on-ramp and she was texting on her phone. Uh, I looked, I remember I looked dead at her and before she could react, she had already hit me um, and knocked me off my motorcycle over the barrier um, into oncoming traffic. And before I could even hit the ground, a car had came and hit me, so. Yeah, so that was, that was probably the hardest part for me to get over. Several deployments, been in the arm, Army all this time, senior NCO, and then I probably could deal with it if it was my fault. I would probably be able to cope with it a lot better, but for somebody else's negligence, you know, um, made me lose my arm, and she kept going. Didn't, didn't bother to stop, nothing. Cycling is my baby, that's my, my number one sport. Um, I work real hard on that. Um, my goal is to be a Paralympic cyclist. I wouldn't say I was overconfident, but I knew that in my division, I was that top cyclist. Everything was great. I uh, have what they call a spring-loaded uh, shock, Fox shock. And uh, it absorbs the shock and it, it allows me to 
to put pressure on my uh, prosthetic side and um, I don't know, I, I just came around the corner and I, I guess I hit a pothole or I meant the cover in the road. And, um, I felt the air just let out of my arm and then uh, not even two minutes later, the whole arm just collapsed, the whole prosthetic just collapsed. So I tried to ride with the prosthetic in the air so I wouldn't have to stop, but that didn't work. So I had to come to a complete stop, unclip. Um, I just remember taking off my arm, throwing it to the side, and uh, I just kept going. He lost it from another race. He didn't quit. That's the spirit of these games. He stepped up. One arm, I couldn't imagine how hard it is to control a bike with one arm. And he kept going. And after he was done, I went up to him and I said, you know what? You could have quit and you didn't. That's inspirational to me. There's a lot of reasons why, you know, people want to give up, but I just couldn't do it. I've come too far, I've worked too hard. Um, if anybody else was in my situation, I would encourage them to keep going. You know, I didn't come here to quit and uh, I wouldn't let anybody else quit, you know? Um, so I just pushed. I just gave it a mile and I let, when I got done, I was literally dry heaving on the side. I just wanted to leave it all out on the course. Even if he doesn't make the team, or even if he didn't put up a good score because he lost his arm, he still competed, he still adapted, and he overcame and finished that race. That's what these, that's what these trials are about. It's not about who wins or loses. Yeah, you want to make the team, but it's about finding yourself. I wish I could speak to the, the wounded that aren't here, that are reluctant to come out here because great things happen here regardless of whether you're even trying sometimes. It, it kind of, the community comes together and the camaraderie of all of the wounded, it, it spurs people on to do things they didn't think they could do. Um, and the coaches are here too to help you do that and figure out, well, I'm not sure if I can swim with one leg. Let's figure out how you can do it. I'm not sure if I can throw a discus. Well, let's figure out how you can do it. There are ways to do it and that's why the coaches are here. But the, the greater aspect of that is the, all the athletes come together and it's a place of, of commonality. Everybody here is different. Everybody here has something going on. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't, but you know everybody here has something going on. And you, you look around like, well, if that guy can do it with no legs, then I can do it because my arm hurts. This spinal issue guy can hardly walk, but he's getting in a bike and going 30 kilometers. It's the commonality of the goal and we're going to try it and we're gonna see what we can do, not worried about what we can't do. That's much better. They have top-notch coaches. Uh, my throws coaches, college coaches, you know, or top 10 in the world throwers, you know. A lot of one-on-one -on -one time, you have a question, they shut everything else down, talk to you. And there's enough coaches here that, you know, you might not get a full practice one-on-one, -on -one, but you're gonna get some one-on-one -on -one me time with the coach. Okay, here's that hand. And what I said, when you relax your hand, you get the follow through. When you release it like this, or you release it like that, you let it go, and your hand stays right there. The coaching that I've received for the few events that I do has been phenomenal. Um, I didn't realize there were so many small details to each and every uh, sporting uh, activity that we're doing. Just case in point, cycling. Go. I run pretty frequently back at Walter Reed in um, Bethesda, Maryland, but I've never gotten down into the uh, nuts and bolts, if you will, as far as things like cornering, 
pedaling, how do you engage a heel? When do you want to cycle off your pedaling in order to uh, recover? And then when when should you uh, get really get back on your horse? Um, I, I've learned a lot. The coaches here are are first class, top notch. Uh, yes, top notch. Even outside of the wounded warriors here at the trials or at camps, um, even in everyday life, the people that inspire me are those that have things happen to them and keep going. And they realize it may not be the best situation. It might be a hardship and they adapt and overcome and improvise a lot. And that's what we see here, obviously, but it happens in our life too. And those are the people I kind of look up to and go, if they can do it, then I can do it. Military adaptive sports to me is mainly taking sports that everybody does, but then because of injuries and limitations that you may have experienced, figuring out a way to still do the same sports in a different way. It's uh, not really that you can't do the sport, it's just that you have to figure out a way that you can do the sport. And that's, that's something that I think is really important that needs to be stressed about what adaptive sports are. The Military Adaptive Sports Program, the Army sees it in a, a wider lens. So we see it as one portion of what we call adaptive reconditioning. So adaptive reconditioning has a number of different aspects to it. And there's, a, there's that physical part to it. There's a, a, a spiritual part to it. Uh, there's a, a family part to it. So, you know, and, and a lot of the athletes are here with their, their spouses. Uh, those are, that's a real important part, that support that comes from the family. Uh, there's a career part to it, uh, you know, there is a, uh, an educational part to it. So all these come together, we bring, try to bring all these together. So, you know, when we're trying, say somebody is uh, learning how to adapt, learning how to recondition themselves adaptively, we not, you know, cooking could be uh, something they do, writing poetry could be something they do, uh, you know, beyond just the, the physical. So all those things help that person uh, improve themselves to, to be a more productive, soldier or veteran. Military Adaptive Sports Program is a, a big psychological and physical um, tool that is used throughout the military to help people cope with themselves, help them cope with their, their feeling and inadequacy and things like that. Um, a lot of times people don't, in the, in the world, don't see a lot of people that they can cope with, that they can relate to. So being in Adaptive Sports brings you together with a lot of people that are just like you, um, worse and some better. Um, you can compete with them and, and feel like you're part of home, part of the family. Military adaptive sports for me is trying new sports and it might not be what you're comfortable with. Like I started in the swimming pool but my best sport is actually field and I learned to do cycling and I learned to do tennis and I went with the VA and did downhill and cross country skiing and so the adaptive sports is just to get you active. It, you, you don't have to bring it to this level, it's great if you do, but it's just to get the soldiers and veterans more active in life and find out that they might find a sport that they like. The military adaptive sports program has changed lives through what I've seen and through my own life. Uh, I, I, I'm not afraid to, you know, talk to people now. I have more confidence. I have uh, that outlook on life again, you know, to where I, I sort of shut myself off from the world before because uh, I felt like I was being looked down upon because I, I, I couldn't hold a conversation with somebody. Um, and now it's, I'm, I'm back to me is the best I can be. That's what the Military Adaptive Sports Program brought for me. The Military Adaptive Sports Program has really been a, an amazing uh, program for me, uh, especially in the San Antonio area, because coming back from Afghanistan, uh, becoming a warrior in transition at the WTB, I, I understood the mission, and the mission is for uh, the soldier to, to get better, to rehab. So it was a great opportunity for me to not only get my life together,
but to, to give back to the Army and do something while I was healing. The military adaptive sports program is everything to me. I was deployed in 2007, and when I came back due to my injuries, I wasn't able to do the sports that I did before. I was a basketball player, I did volleyball, and I did softball. I wasn't able to do those things anymore because of the knee injuries that I suffered. So I was introduced to the Warrior Games in 2010 at Fort Belvoir, and I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. At the time when I came back, I was so depressed. I was so depressed about my injuries and everything that had happened to me, and I just wanted to be active again. And Military Adaptive Sports gave me that opportunity to be active again, and I've been doing it ever since. expect um, positive change here. Uh, we count on it and in some cases significant life-altering change and I, I, I have seen it with my own eyes uh, over and over again and uh, it, it's you know if you just save one life it's all worth it. The old expression well you know it's worth it. Um, we're, we're positively affecting many lives um, and, and we're putting our our young people here on a positive tangent for the rest of their lives. The military adaptive sports program means a lot. Not just in what it's done for me in a selfish way, but also for the way it touches others who have not been in the military. My son and daughter are seeing people with multiple amputations, severe burns, severe injuries and wounds, who are not only surviving, but thriving. The military adaptive sports program for me is a tool. This war has affected all of us and how are we going to pick up those pieces? And for me, for me the hope, for me the way back was adaptive sports and adaptive reconditioning. The most therapeutic time in my life is getting on a bicycle and riding. The Military Adaptive Sports Program, when I think of that, I think about my friends that uh, don't have legs anymore or missing an arm and uh, the things that they can accomplish, you know, or are accomplishing and they live such full lives and happy lives and a lot of people don't get to see that, you know, and it's, they've been in a very low spot and they're able to pick themselves up and it's just, it's incredible. These young men and women have done such great things and made sacrifices for our country that we as a nation owe it to them to provide the best possible support that we can through their recovery process. The wounded, ill, and injured members of the military deserve the very best that our country has to provide for them. I mean, our nation expects it, our leadership expects it, and that's what we should be doing. We should put every single effort we can into helping their recovery process.